Hi everybody. I thought today I would just talk some about how to loosen up. A lot of times people will ask me, I just want to loosen up my style. How do I go about doing that? Well, I think it just takes a lot of experimentation, practicing, and just doing a lot of little experiments from time to time. So I'll share some of the things that I think are important and some of the things that I've done. Um, one of the first things that I think is important if you want to loosen up is to stand when you work, if you're able to do that. Because I used to sit uh, when I did a lot of my pastels and the sitting compared to the standing is a big difference because when I sat, I would only use from here to here, just like this. So it was much more controlled. But when I stand, I'm using my whole arm and sometimes even my body gets into it and um, it makes a big difference. So I think that's one of the first things to think about is can you stand when you are working? Can you stand at an easel? Um, start to use your arm instead of your wrist and really getting those big uh, strokes of either the charcoal, the pastel, or even a brush with your arm. If I have a large brush, this is one of the brushes that I like to paint with, if I am painting by holding on to this long handled brush at the end and I'm making these big movements with my arm, that's going to make it much looser than if I have this tiny brush and I'm holding it like a pencil and I'm making those tighter marks like that. So it all, I guess, boils down to the movement of your arm and how you are holding whatever it is that you're using, whether it's a brush, whether it's charcoal or pastel, and making those larger movements. So that's one of the things that I think are, is important. So do you have to get a fresh canvas out and do that? No. Um, practice making those movements like I just did with nothing on paper, just with um, a brush. You know, if you're not used to working loose, then just practice making those looser movements with your arm and imagining what that would feel like to make those movements with a brush on paper or canvas or with a pastel. How can I make those, those big movements like that instead of something that's tiny? How can I make those movements with pastel that are with the side of the pastel instead of the tip? See, when I'm making those marks with the tip, I can get some nice marks, but they're going to be much more tight and more controlled. So there's a reason for both of them. I think it's good to have a mix of these broad areas of pastel and then these tighter marks. The same with the, uh, goes with the brush. Um... Another thing that is helpful, and you'll see this in books, and I've also done this in workshops with either pastel or with the brush, is put that brush or the pastel, let me pick one here, uh, in your non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so if I put it in my left hand, 
and I make those marks, I'm not going to be as controlled. That's part of loosening up, is also loosening up the control and letting things come from within more than from your head. So really loosening up the control, you could do that with your non-dominant hand. See what that might be like to do a painting or a drawing or a pastel with your non-dominant hand. Um, another thing that is very helpful to do is to draw or paint to music. Now when I first started working with abstract pastels, I used music, but it was really slow kind of music they would play when you're getting a massage. And um, then I personally went to a workshop on intuitive drawing, and the instructor played this high energy, wild kind of violin music and I had everyone making marks to the music. Well, that really changed things for me. So when I came home from that workshop, which was 2006, um, I changed to standing up, playing high energy music, moving to the music, you know, and moving faster. And that really changed things because the faster you work, the less your head gets in the way. When your head gets in the way and you start thinking about what you're doing, then you start controlling it and trying to predict the outcome. Where if you're moving faster and you're moving to the music and you're just letting yourself go, then you're starting to work more intuitively. So um, I listen to Pandora and I can try to make my Pandora station available to you. I'll have to look and see how I can do that. But uh, that's another recommendation that I have is, and also I like music that doesn't have words. I listen to, uh, you know, world beat global music, you know, some of it with an African, Moroccan, you know, just kind of really fast-paced music that I use. So I think the station I listen to on Pandora is called Global Chill, which is a really good one. So another thing to do, which is just a practice thing, is not to do a whole painting like this, but just to practice is to close your eyes when you are making marks. Close your eyes so you can just feel what it feels like. Instead of thinking, you just close your eyes, make those marks, make those marks to the music, let it come, and just move your charcoal, move your brush different directions. Uh, let me get another one. And just um, feel it. That's what I'm saying. Is and if you can see that most everything I'm telling you is to try and get yourself to stop thinking and predicting and controlling, but just really let it go. Um, so with painting, one of the things I, I think is the larger you want to paint, the larger the brush should be. So if I want to do a small painting, then I could do a little brush like this if my painting is if my painting is like this large then I can do a pretty loose painting but if I go much bigger then I need to use a bigger brush to get those bigger strokes uh, I have a lot of different sizes here's a big brush. These are called Liquitex Freestyle brushes and I really like these. I like this flat um, surface so I can get, you know, a big sweep of color. I'm just using water here, but 
I could get this nice big, you know, so play around with it. Um, I have some even bigger than that. I have a big brush over here. This is really a great brush. I'd like to get some more of these. This holds a lot of water, but and it holds a lot of paint. So these long handle brushes. So the other thing that is important, whether it's with pastel, whether it is with paint, is to be able to get away and get back from your painting. So I have a small room here that I work in, but I go across the hall and look at what I'm doing from the other room. I stand in the doorway. I move back and forth quite a bit. Let's see if I'm painting and I want to put a color down. I step back, way back here, look at what I'm doing, and I step up and I put that color down with my brush. Okay, the same with pastel. If I, because sometimes you're up to something so close, you really can't see what it is that you should be doing. So you need to step back from it, take a look from farther back, and then walk up and make those marks. Okay, so, you know, all of these things are not things that you're going to practice when you're creating a painting. I would say that practice all of these things on newsprint, on paper that you don't care about, with paint maybe that's not as expensive. Uh, just practice making looser strokes, stepping back and forth, drawing or painting to music, using your non-dominant hand, drawing or painting with your eyes closed. Use some cheap paper and just practice and have fun with it. And the other thing is, I think also with loosening up, is not every time you get a piece of paper out or a canvas does it have to turn out. Do you have to make something that will be a success? Build some um, experimenting time into your schedule. And when you get a piece of paper out, just tell yourself, this is my experimenting time. This is my play time. I'm just going to make marks and I don't care what happens. I'm going to throw it away because I'm practicing mark making. I'm practicing loosening up. You have to build that into your schedule so that when it gets to the point where you do get that canvas out, you'll have that practice time that's in the background. And all of that practice time helps you when you get to the point where you do have that piece of paper out that you really want to create something. Uh, you have that canvas out. It's really a lot like sports. So you do a lot of warm-ups with sports. You do a lot of practicing, um, but you're not always, you know, playing the round of golf. Maybe you're practicing your swing. You're practicing you know, how to hold the club. You're practicing all of these things until it gets to the point where you step up and you swing the club and you hit the ball. So the same thing with art is there's a lot of practice that goes into it. And especially if you're trying something new, um, give yourself a lot of practice time. So that is some of my pointers and some of the things that I think are important in loosening up your style.